Okay, so um, here we're looking at a slight variation of the last circuit and it uh, works quite well as a dual piece as well. Um, our variation is we've taken the um, LED from across the collector emitter junction and we have it placed across the emitter base junction. So uh, now the LED is instead of running from L1 it is running off of L2. So the basic description or operation of a dual faith is um, when you first plug your 1.5 volt battery in um, on a dual faith circuit, uh, which I may have here somewhere. Let's have a look see, a quick look see. Close enough. I was just, uh, I have the LED here instead of across here. Um, but when you first hook your battery in, the uh, power is supposed to flow through what we'll call our L2 coil through the resistor into the base and start to switch the transistor on, which in turn allows a current to flow through L1. The magnetic field starts to build up, thus increasing the current voltage flowing through L2 into the base which switches the transistor on even harder. Once the core reaches a saturation point um, no more current is generated and that current begins to fall off, the field starts to collapse and um, your inductive kickback I guess you could call it is sent through the LED and once all that energy is dissipated from the collapsing magnetic field um, the process starts up once again where that battery fires up the transistor and creating that cascade effect to switch it on. So there's a problem with that and that operation is not quite correct. Um, each transistor has a base threshold voltage needed to switch that transistor on. Um, this circuit is slightly different. This one here, as you can see is this circuit here and um, you can see that L2 is not directly coupled to L1 as it is in the dual phase circuit. But um, the transistor I'm using is a 2N3055 which requires around 700 millivolts to switch on. Um, the supply voltage to this circuit at the moment, that is our same 10mm LED running nice and bright there. The supply voltage is 236.3 milliamps according to this meter. 50, uh, sorry, millivolts, 250 millivolts according to the PSU. I would suggest this meter is probably a little more accurate. Um, which is, that voltage is way below the required voltage to start the switch that transistor on. And as we know, we need 700 millivolts to switch the transistor on. It must be coming from somewhere and it must be there. Alright, so the blue channel of our scope is across the emitter base junction. I have it inverted so as we can see when the LED light is on um, that would be the positive side of the voltage spike on our scope. When the LED is off and the transistor is being switched on that would be the negative voltage we see on the scope. The yellow channel is across emitter collector junction Alright, so we know our LED is on during this spike here, 3 volt max, which is the running voltage of the LED. But you'll notice here, during the transistor on time, the voltage across the base emitter junction is in fact 720 millivolts and not the 236 millivolts we are supplying the system with. So, um, that is a bit of disinformation that the transistor is being switched on by the battery voltage. The same applies with the last dual thief circuit I showed you. You need to have that threshold voltage at the base of the transistor in order for the um, next cycle to actually start. And when we get down to voltages like this, um, there is not enough voltage for the cycle to start.
but as we know and all those that have played with dual piece circuits you can get the battery voltage down as low as this and the transistor will still fire um, that is because the transistor does not rely on the battery voltage to fire up as per description at overunity.com it is incorrect as you can clearly see here with this circuit we do indeed have the required 700 millivolts plus to switch the transistor on not the 236 millivolts we are feeding the system so um, but this variation works very well it is very efficient it's probably more so efficient as far as power in and light output goes um, to that of the uh, common dual phase circuit using around 23 milliamps at the moment at 2.236 millivolts um, and we're getting a nice decent amount of light from the LED so um, it's running quite fine so that is the variation the LED is now placed across the emitter base junction and we are using the flyback from L2 um, when the transistor switches off to drive that LED but who knows um, how the transistor is switching on. The supply voltage is 236 millivolts. Uh, transistor is switching on at 720 millivolts. Now this circuit is different, but the dual piece works in the same way. So who can work that out? It's got something to do with the transistor that you are using itself. Right, thanks for watching, um, and I guess we'll see you next video. Cheers, guys.